Hey guys, it's Sandro here, and today's video is a direct comparison and review of three one-step compounds including 3D1, Sonex Cut and Finish, and Shell Concepts S20 Black. A one-step compound is basically a medium traditional compound that's ideally got a good balance of both cut and finish on various paint types so that it can be used successfully in a single stage of paint correction to produce a great result. This is not to be confused with an all-in-one polish or compound which is a very different compound that can also contain cleaners, fillers, sealants and sometimes primers to clean, correct, prepare and seal car paint all in one step. So in other words, where you traditionally use a cutting compound to remove defects and a final finishing polish to restore gloss in a two-stage correction, a one-step or medium compound is a compromise of those two compounds that can save you time in achieving both cut and finish in a single correction step. I just wanted to point that out because one-step polishes and all-in-one polishes seem to be confused a lot. The one-step compounds in this review will be judged in three vital areas including the user experience, their defect removal ability and their high gloss finishing ability to see how they compare and perform so let's get to it. Throughout this video you're going to see just a small portion of the testing that took place working on a number of different test panels in both indoors and outdoor environments with some hard and soft paints, some clear coated and single stage paints and with a number of different rotary and DA polishes with wool, microfiber and foam pads using a variety of different techniques all about trying to push these compounds to their limits and discover as much as I can about them. To keep this video at a reasonable length, I'm not going to go through every test one by one, but rather share my findings and results, and then give you my overall conclusions at the end. The first area of assessment is the user experience. So for now, I just want to focus on what these compounds are like to work with, rather than the results. If a compound is difficult to wipe off, dusts like crazy, splatters everywhere, clogs up your pads, and doesn't have good rotational lubrication, you're just simply not going to want to use it no matter how well it cuts or finishes because you're going to have a miserable paint correction experience. Now you can obviously change and adapt your technique to a compound's characteristics to have a better experience. But when using these compounds side by side, this is what I discovered about their user experience compared to one another. Firstly, when it comes to dusting, I'm confident in saying that 3D1 is the best in this area. And unless you're working in the blazing hot sun and not cleaning your pads regularly, dusting isn't really an issue with 3D1. Sonex Cut and Finish was close behind being quite a dust free compound, unless you do push it a little too far. And although Shoal S20 Black certainly isn't a high dusting compound, it did dust a little more than the other two when pushed. Next was the wipe off. You'll find that almost every compound has a sweet spot and if you don't break it down enough or if you polish too long, the wipe off becomes a worse experience. Now what I found was that when I hit the sweet spot of each compound, S20 Black was always the nicest and easiest to wipe off. But if I didn't polish enough or polish too long with each compound, then 3D1 was more forgiving in those circumstances. But what I also discovered was that Sonex Cut and Finish did tend to have the most difficult wipe off no matter which technique, pad, machine or pads I worked with. I wouldn't say it was terrible but in a direct comparison here it was noticeably more difficult to wipe. Next was product sling. I'll start by saying that you can certainly eliminate or at least reduce a compound's potential to sling by using a good technique and overall it's not a significant problem with DA polishes compared to rotaries that are more prone to it. But in saying that, all this testing was about trying to determine which compounds were better or worse in each area. Shoulders 20 Black with its thicker consistency was simply the least likely to sling or create a mess. And I'd actually say it was quite good in this area. 3D1 was noticeably more prone to sling and you really do need to start very slow and very slowly increase speed if you wish to avoid it. While Sonex time and time again was the one compound here that I struggled a little to prevent sling while on rotary use. But because its sling was much thinner and almost transparent in look, it was less noticeable to spot. I also find it a little strange because it seems as though Sonex cut and finish is more geared towards rotary use according to the brand. 
Another important area is lubrication and consistency, which improves pad rotation and allows you to read the compound while in motion. 3D1 did seem to hold its lubrication quite well from start to finish, and also have a nice transparent and consistent look that didn't change all that much and just seemed to continue almost as long as you wanted to continue polishing. Shoulders 20 Black on the other hand is a little different. It starts out a lot more opaque and well lubricated initially, and as you progress it becomes noticeably more transparent as a sign it's broken down and done its job. But if you continue polishing beyond that, it will slowly start to lose its lubrication, become patchy and start dusting as a sign you're pushing it too far. So in many ways it lets you know when to continue and when to stop. Whereas 3D1 lets you decide, at least within reason, as it obviously also has its limits. I think Sonex Cut and Finish, like 3D1, has a long potential polishing cycle with decent lubrication, but that's where the similarities end, as there's a certain patchiness or lack of consistency in its look as it goes from wet to dry and opaque to transparent over and over and back and forth, making it quite hard to read. It's almost like the compound is being sucked up and released out of the pads at different times, rather inconsistently to create that patchy wet and dry scattered look over the section. Initially I thought maybe the compound was separated, but after constantly shaking it and seeing that it was well combined, I had to conclude that it's just part of its thin formulation and characteristic, just like the way it seems to sling a little more easily. Working outside in direct sunlight was another interesting set of tests. The thing to understand about S20 Black is that it does what it needs to do much quicker than the other two compounds. So you can do much shorter polishing cycles and get the results faster, which is definitely ideal in hot outdoor environments. But in saying that, S20 is the compound here that dusted and dried the quickest in direct sunlight, though it was still reasonable if you worked quick enough. 3D1 was easily the compound that resisted dusting the most outdoors and did have an acceptable wipe off actually making it quite reasonable and usable here as long as you kept the polishing cycles as short as possible. Sonex Cut and Finish just isn't a compound I'd advise in hot outdoor environments. Now the dusting wasn't too bad and actually less than Shoulders 20, but the wipe off was just too difficult and unreasonable to make it a viable option in that environment. A final point as far as the user experience goes is pad residue control. Now one advantage in a compound that can slightly dust is that it also tends to blow or brush out of the pads far easier and reduce gunking up the pads and that was certainly the case with Schult S20 Black. It was noticeably better at removing itself from the wool, microfiber and foam pads, though I wouldn't say it was exceptional here, just better than the other two. Sonic's Cut and Finish was the next best compound in this area, being not too bad and actually seemed to resist overloading the pads as the compound mostly came out of the pads during polishing. While 3D1 did seem to clog up the pads much quicker and was more difficult to blow or brush out by comparison. All in all guys, there's pros and cons to every one of these compounds in their user experience and like I said earlier, you can definitely adapt and tweak your technique to minimize a lot of these cons and have a better user experience with each of them. In saying that, I think both 3D1 and Shoal S20 Black are quite nice one-step compounds to use, and generally speaking, it's really going to come down to how you personally like working as to whether one is actually nicer than the other in your world. With Sonic's Cut and Finish, I'd be lying if I said it didn't have a little more cons than the other two and a few question marks about its consistency. But overall, I think it's still reasonable, and I think if you work a certain way that plays to its strengths, you can certainly use it with good success. The next area of evaluation was the compound's ability to remove paint defects or their cutting performance. Once again guys, these results were based around many tests on many paint types with many different pads and machines, apart from what you'll see in the footage. I'll start by saying that out of all the testing here, this is where I believe all three compounds were most closely matched, which is why it was so difficult to get helpful data and try to separate them in this area. But I'm always up for a challenge, so I persisted, and I think it paid off well in obtaining some fantastic information, though it's not as clear cut as you may think. So here goes. When I used a restrained and quick polishing cycle, let's say doing two to three light passes in a minute, 
it became very clear that Shoulders 20 Black was producing the most cut about 80 to 90% of the time. When I stepped it up to a more standard set of passes, let's say doing four passes over 90 seconds and using moderate pressure, the results were much closer. But S20 Black was still removing a little more of the defects than the other two compounds overall. However, once I went beyond that and moved onto six, eight and 10 row passes and polishing for two to three minutes at a time and using a bit more pressure, that's when I started to see both 3D1 and Sonex cut and finish start to cut more than S20 Black. So it's really when I started comparing all of them at the extreme ends that provided me with the most useful information about how they go about cutting in different ways. Now between 3D1 and Sonex cut and finish, it was even a little harder to determine which one, when pushed the hardest, actually produced better cut and here's why. Even when I did get a little aggressive with 3D1 and Shoal S20 Black, although the finish wasn't great, it was still reasonable in most cases. But when I did the same thing with Sonex cut and finish, it was so full of compounding swirls, holograms and marring that actually made it difficult to assess what was the original remaining defects and what was inflicted by the compound. If you were twisting my arm, I'd say that Sonex may cut a little more than 3D1 at the extreme ends. But in all honesty, these compounds are meant to be medium, one-step compounds, not heavy cutting compounds, and in that context, it's hard to accept such a poor finish from Sonex when you step up the aggression. I want to be clear that if you're not overly aggressive with Sonex cut and finish, it will absolutely finish much better, but I'll talk more about that in a bit. Something else you may find interesting is that I compared doing two smaller sets of four passes with one larger set of eight passes with all three compounds and this is what I found. Two quicker sets always cut far more than one longer set with all of them, even though the actual polishing time was identical. In a nutshell, what this showed is that although both 3D1 and Sonex cut and finish can keep on cutting well for extended polishing sets, they still lose their peak cutting performance regardless of the abrasive formulas. So even if you do want to polish a section for three minutes, you'll actually get much better cut doing two 90 second sets rather than one three minute set with all three compounds. In any case, this is what I concluded. Shell cuts more right off the bat and without using overly aggressive techniques. In fact, if you're too aggressive with it, you may even lose some of its cut if you break it down too quickly. 3D1 doesn't have as much cut in the first couple of passes, but it definitely continues to cut for longer in extended polishing cycles and does rely on some at least moderate aggression to obtain its peak cutting ability. Sonex is really close to 3D1 in the way it cuts, but seems to prolong breaking down even more so and perhaps has a touch more cut overall but that can come at the price of the finish if you go a little too hard with your combination and technique. So finally on to assessing the finish that these one step compounds can produce. Honestly guys, unlike the last cutting ability assessment that was a little complicated, this was pretty clear cut and constant across the board, but there's still some things to take note of. I'll start by saying that given the right paint, right pad and technique combination, you can absolutely finish near perfect with great gloss and clarity with all of them at times. But when you work all three compounds side by side on hard, medium and soft paints over and over with various pads and machines, you really start to see a constant trend in how well they finish that is very clear. There's just no denying that Shoulders 20 Black finished better than the other two compounds in almost every test I did. And in the couple of tests where it wasn't the winner, it was a draw. Now I'm not saying that it finished perfectly on every paint as it's still a medium compound and on the very soft and sensitive paints, it still left a little haze behind where a finer polish would be needed to achieve perfection. But with that said, as a quicker one step process and result, it would definitely be within the realm of acceptability. Even on the softest paints and on medium to hard paints, it can certainly achieve near perfection in almost every case. 3D1 was also quite clearly in second place as far as finishing ability goes. Now on soft to medium paints, I still don't see it as an acceptable one step compound, as there was just too much micro marring and mold haze that I just wouldn't feel comfortable with as a final finish. But on medium to harder paints, it can certainly finish well to perfect the harder the paint is, and obviously with the right pad and technique choice. 
As a one-step compound, Sonex cut and finish just simply isn't going to finish well on anything but hard paint. Now, what one detailer sees as an acceptable finish compared to another can be a subjective thing. But I just couldn't imagine one-stepping a Japanese paint with this compound and producing an acceptable finish. However, I could definitely see that happening with a hard Euro paint, and that's really my conclusion here. It's a one-step compound for hard paints, and in that scenario, I think it could be quite good, once again, if your pad and technique choice is on point. Finishing well on hard paints usually isn't an issue. It's cutting that's the issue, and there's certainly an advantage in having a one-step compound that can cut well on hard paints to make your life easier. On the opposite side of the spectrum, increased cut isn't a huge issue on softer paints. It's trying to finish well on those soft and sensitive paints that cause us so much grief. So a one-step compound that can finish well there will also make your life much easier. So let's wrap up this video. I've already tried to give you the most objective information I can about these compounds, which is probably a better way to judge them. But this final summary will be my very subjective opinions that may very well be different to yours, which is fine. Starting with Sonex Cut and Finish, I think it's a decent compound. But if I went back to when it was first released over a decade ago, I'm sure I'd like it even more. But in today's detailing world where it's a very different game and we expect more in both the user experience and results, I just struggled a little to see myself using it. Here's the other thing, I actually did test it alongside some of my favourite heavy cutting compounds like the Last Cut Plus, CarPro Ultra Cut and Shoal S2 Black. And not only did those compounds cut significantly more, but in many cases they also finished better. I think it's just a reflection of how far compounds have come. And sadly, as much as I respect Sonex as a brand, I don't think Cut and Finish has stood the test of time. And I don't think it's a good reflection of the brand's best at this point in time. 3D1 coming out just a few years ago and being the newest compound of the three, seems to have capitalized on producing a more user-friendly and very adaptable compound that as someone who has used their compounds quite extensively in the past, I can say with great confidence that this is their best detailer-focused compound rather than the more body shop-developed compounds it's historically known for. As detailers, we work on more diverse paints in more diverse environments and want compounds that can address more diverse situations and goals which is very different to a standardized body shop's needs and wants. No compound is perfect, and if 3D1 could finish just a touch better on soft to medium paints, it'd be even more so impressive. But I also understand why detailers in particular have embraced this compound, as overall it's a solid and reliable one-step compound. Shoulders 20 Black first came out about 6 or 7 years ago and one thing you may find interesting is that its original formula in the first year or two, before it was updated, actually never dusted and also had a much longer work time which reminded me of 3D1 while making this review. So then why did Shoal change the formula? Although the original S20 Black didn't dust and had a longer working period, it was also a little harder to wipe off and I also discovered that the updated and current formula finish slightly better on softer paints compared to the original. What I'm trying to explain here is that there's always a delicate balance when it comes to fine tuning a compound. You have to make compromises and every little change affects something else. If there was a compound that could cut as much or as little as you desired, finish perfectly on every paint and had the most amazingly beautiful user experience then we'd only have one compound in the world. Though not perfect, for me S20 Black is an exceptional medium compound that still finds the best balance of cut and finish, has a nice user experience and is the cheapest one at least here in Australia. But I completely understand why it may not be everyone's favourite one step compound, as we all work a little differently and as such produce different results with different user experiences and its cost and availability can vary worldwide. So in the end it's all about what works best in your world. Although I have my opinions, my intent with these reviews isn't to tell you which product you should get. It's about trying to give you good, helpful information so you can go away and make the right choice for yourselves. The best thing you can do is ask yourself, how do I like to work with compounds? What sort of paint am I likely to use it on? What are the most important characteristics in a compound that I'm after? 
That's where the answer lies as to which compound you should get and which one of these one-step compounds you're likely to have the best experience with. Beyond that, I hope there's some great information if you already have these compounds to get the most out of them with a better understanding of how they perform. I think I'll leave it there guys and if you enjoyed this video and would like to say thanks and help support future content, you can do so by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash ccad in which I'll have a link to in the description box or you can now hit the thanks button below the video and thank you everyone for the support so far. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share it with others, give it a like and comment below to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon.